Okay, how we doing out there first things first? My name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Luminous 4K screen paint using ambulant rejection technology gain times eight, nine, and soon to be ten. I'm showing you the screen paint mixes that we made downstairs in the uh, basement uh, using several different forms of gray screen screen. Um, or actually, not several, several different forms of actually gray paint. And several sort of different forms of, um, of uh, actually we use a metallic paint and a kind of crystal uh, to make this, I guess, to make the screen basically reflect. I don't know. I don't know why they put that stuff in there to begin with. Because all it does is give your, um, your, uh, your screen the Christmas tree effect, which is this really annoying glitter that popped up sparkling effect. That pops up across your screen, so you'll be seeing it right there close. That's that really annoying glitter. So we have three different shades of the screen paint painted onto our surface. As you can see, we're in an environment with a ton of ambient light, as it should be. You know, if you're going to be using your projection screen, uh, keep in mind people are going to be using these things more than just for movies. They're going to be using them for all different sorts of uses. And if you're going to be watching TV, chances are your living room is not going to be in complete darkness. So I'm about to have my morning tea. So we're going to be doing this pretty soon today with the uh, Optima GT5600, which is an ultra short throw projector. It has 3,600 lumens and it has a um, 20,000 to one contrast. We'll be using that one today or 25 or somewhere up there. It's really high. We'll be doing that demonstration down ultra short throw. Now, for those of you that are going to be using your projection screens much like a TV, you're going to be using it in a well-lit environment, lights on, window light, all the other good stuff. You want to have the screen that's going to be to produce both contrast and bright levels at the same time. And these are the different mixes that we made downstairs in the basement. I'll post that video at the bottom if you missed it. Also, too, the other demonstration that we did on a projector of 1500 lumens at 1600 to 1 contrast. Now we're using the Sony projector at 4300 lumens, 1920 by uh, 1200. This is a lot of power to use in a fully lit environment. Some people feel that if you're going to be using a projector in a well lit environment, especially if you're on a gray screen, that you're going to have to have a projector with a very high caliber of lumens. As we're using 4300 lumens, as you can see, you won't be able to see the screen at all involving any form of contrast levels. Now, one of the things I noticed that when I watch a lot of the demonstrations, people using light gray screen mixes, is that they will lean toward very bright colors, colors that would have less of a chance of fading out. Uh, one of the weak parts of these screens is contrast. These screens do not have that capability where black screens or our technology does produce a contrast level, excellent contrast level, of course, because it's black. And it also can produce a, an amazing white level. Which I had demonstrated multiple times showing our screen producing uh, against other black materials where I've never seen this done with light gray screen paints. I've never seen multiple shades of light gray screen paint versus contrast level, which one would actually have the better contrast. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is the Mortal Kombat, which is a 2015 trailer. This is a pretty dark, dark demonstration. Mortal Kombat has a lot of dark scenery of Call of Duty, games like that. Usually you couldn't play games like this on a light gray screen. So we're just going to bring the speakers up just a little bit because it is early in the morning and wife is asleep. So first things first I got to do is I got to put some more window light in here because it's not bright enough. Curtains have to be fully exposed to the screen. Now I my pajama gear in pajama. I will scar you for life. I will scar you for life. All right, so let's open up some of these curtains a little bit here. I got to talk to my neighbors today because I'm pretty sure they think I've got to be nuts. Because keep in mind, you know, if you live right next to me, across from me, and you're watching this man turn his lights on and off multiple times, you got to be thinking, oh yeah, this guy definitely has to be a bit of cuckoo or wackadoo or whatever. So I guess I'll walk over there today and talk to my neighbors, explain to them what I do because I'd be a little baffled also. Now the reason why I haven't done this curtain right here, because this actually connects over to my neighbor's home. I don't want to be walking around with a camera, you know, thinking that I'm recording them. But that window right there is not going to show too much at all. 
this is these are the windows you want. These are the windows you want. So actually, we have plenty of light, and we have the projector over here, probably sitting back, probably good, maybe by about eight or nine feet back. And we're going to do this demonstration. Now, yesterday, I do apologize. My camera died on me, so I'm not responsible for that one. I should have charged it. I didn't think the battery was that low. So we're going to do more to combat, dark scenery, contrast levels only. One of the things you have to do if you're developing great screen paint, you have to pull off contrast. Which is virtually impossible. Now, keep in mind, if black technology didn't exist, gray screen's contrast levels would be superior to white screen because, <clears throat> sorry about that, that's what they'd be rated against, a, a, um, a light for a better contrast. But now you're talking about a black screen now. Black screen is a whole nother category. That means that gray screen does not stand a chance against a black screen. Now, like I said, before black technology came into effect, all screens were either white or gray. <clears throat> sorry about that. So you have screen, sorry about that, hold it for a minute. <clears throat> I told you I have really bad respiratory issues in the morning, so I have to drink plenty of hot tea when I get up. So keep in mind, when black technology didn't exist, um, you had to have, the only two choices you had were either gray or white. That's what you had. Now, keep in mind, at that particular time, gray screens, or of course, we're going to be much more superior to a white screen. It's going to pull a better contrast than a white screen. It's going to produce a better picture, color than a, than a gray screen, than a, than a white screen. But now you have black technology, where black technology is more superior over a gray screen. So there you are. Got all windows open. Now, like I said, I'm not going to tip you to any of these demonstrations. And this is where I told, I explained to people, if you feel that your technology is different, then all you have to do is say, do the same thing. I put the ingredients at the bottom on how to make it. Now, that's black technology in a fully lit environment. As you can see, the image is going to pull up with no problem whatsoever. Now, one of the hardest things about developing black technology, and I've told people this before, the screen, any black surface is going to pull up a white level. That is just very easy to do. The hard thing for a black screen to do is a poor white level. That's what you have to get it to do. It has to pull white level and has to pull black level at the same time. It can't have too much black and it can't have too much white. It has to be a perfect. So that's where people find out when they develop, try, people try to develop a black screen paint and they can't figure out why the white levels are so dark. It's because there's a little trick to it, but I can't tell you what it is. Now that's black technology in a fully lit environment. See the emblem? Everything on the mortar combat symbol, crystal clear. That's why you can do, this is the difference between our technology and a gray screen in a fully lit environment. Like I said before, when gray screens, like I said, when white screens were all the rage, every screen up there was a white screen. There was no such thing as gray screens at that particular time. When gray screens started coming into the picture, then you had a screen that was actually more superior than a white screen. When black technology started entering the picture, now you have a technology that's higher than a gray screen. Gray screen can't pull contrast. Not on the level of a black screen. But if you figure out a way how to make a black screen produce white levels, then you got a winner there. You got a million dollar idea. Then you because now you've got a black screen that can produce white levels and can do images just as bright as a gray screen, but a gray can produce contrast, something that a gray screen can never do. See, the reason for that contract is because there are areas we can't reach. But with that contract, we can connect to just about anything we need to get our hands on. That's the purpose of those distributorship contracts, to push our technology where it needs to be at. Even at those shows. Pretty soon, we're going to pop up at one of those shows. I plan next year, whenever we, the next show that comes up, we plan to be there. Oh, yeah, we plan to be there with a 10. We're going to crush everything over there. Our booth is going to be set up to push 10 times more ambient light than any booth they're going to have up there. 
it's gonna look like a baseball stadium when we, when we display our screen. And we're gonna use low caliber projectors, all 720p's, no 4K's, no 1080p's. Get my environment. Like I said, the era for light gray screens are coming to an end. As I said before, OLED, some people when they look at an OLED demonstration, they go, well, the colors are showing up. No, you're missing the point here. OLED's demonstrations are black. The backgrounds are black. They're supposed to produce a black image in the background. Just because you're seeing color doesn't mean jack. You're supposed to see black in the background. It's, to, it's designed to be displayed on an OLED TV, which is a black screen, a black tube, whatever we to call it. That's what it, LCD, that's what it is. So when you see this, you think you're saying, oh, because the image is popping up, it's still, it's still producing amazing images. No, it's producing no contrast. That's why the color pops better here than it does over here. Now we'll pull this up real quick. See how much light I got pouring in the environment? That's why I like this environment. This is what I love about this environment. There is no black shades in this environment. There is no awning. I have no awning protecting my screen from any ambient light. And see, there's all no awnings at all protecting my screen. There's nothing but pure light pushing through. On top of that, we got that bright light right there. So it's pretty, it's plenty bright in here. Now, if I can't get, and keep in mind, there is sunlight racing the top of my projector. If I can't get a 400 lumen projector to make this screen pop, then guess what? You're not going to get anything to pop on this screen. So let's start back from the beginning. Let's show you what you get. I mean, people look at this. Some people look at this and say, well, actually, some people develop green, gray screen paint will say, well, it's showing an image. I can see it. No, this is garbage. By my standards, this is a garbage image. It's supposed to look like a TV. That background is literally supposed to be black. If you go watch this on an OLED TV, I bet you 100 bucks it comes up black. It doesn't come up gray. Now, this is a way. Now, I'm switching the camera back and forth. I'm not jumping from the camera. It is early in the morning, people. You do not want to see this. Trust me. You're sitting home having breakfast. Ugh. Damn that, Mr. Bird. All right. Get up close so you can see it. Make sure that sun is not defecting off my camera. Background is always black in the OLED demonstration. Always. It's even harder. This right here is a Sony contrast demo. It's about as dark as dark will ever get. This is one of the darkest demonstrations I've seen. Sony just makes these. If your screen's not pulling contrast, you can't see it. You won't see the black levels. They won't come up. Showing you from different angles on how much light. So you can see up close. There you go.
Now, we're gonna bring it back to the very beginning and we'll take our technology off. So you can see what you get. This is what happens when you spend the money for a good projector and you use a cheap screen paint. It's not done wrong your projector. I have 720p's that I can hit this screen with and it would look amazing. Like I said, the big boy got upstairs at 720p. It's not wrong your projector. Nothing wrong with your lumens. Nothing wrong with that. It's your screen. Hardest demonstration to pull up. It's a star field. It's one of the demonstrations you will not see light gray screens go near. There's a star field. Because with a star field, either you're pulling up black or you pull up nothing. Now, like I said, this demonstration alone, just a star field only. If anybody has a gray screen paint mix of any kind, you would have no problem doing this demonstration right here. Pull up a Starfield demonstration, show your screen paint with other forms of other gray screens, and see which one of these screens will pull up a better contrast. None of them will. No matter how we mix it, no matter how we change the combination, none of them will pull up a contrast level, period. Now, as I said before, we've done this with black screens versus other black screens, different shades of black screens, doing white levels. Our screen pulls up the highest white level, so high that it makes other screens look dark. Don't believe me? I'll post those comments at the bottom. I'll post map effect links at the bottom. I got links that go on for days. Keep in mind that every demonstration I've ever done, basically, I have everything to back up what my technology does. You will never see a demonstration done like this on a gray screen. Now we take our technology. There you go. You got your star field. Got your deep outer space. Can't get any more cut and dry than that one. <clears throat> you just can't. Now consider the fact, if you have, like I said, pretty soon we'll have the Optima GT56 down here. That's, I think mine's 25, I think it's 20 or 25,000 to one contrast. And that thing is going to sit probably less than a, cup, a foot away from the screen at 3,600 lumens. So you can see long throw, short throw, we can use laser, whatever you want, we can use it, you're just not gonna pick up contrast. This is the reason why you can't use a screen like this in a full environment, the screen's gonna have to, you got to turn the lights out to do it. You see any form of contrast, anything that comes up from contrast on the screen. It's just not gonna pull. Let's do, um, let's do a little city background. This is also too, this is for calibrating your projector's black levels. I'm gonna go grab me some more hot water for some more tea. You can check that out for a bit. What? You. I think my screen in my office is around nine, it's probably around 80 inches. I think it's around 80 inches in my office. So 
I'm going to swap out my screen in the office because it's a big screen. And my screen, I'll tell you the truth, the image that I'm pushing off in my uh, of my ultra trip to projector for my from my work PC, it's around nine. Order to me over and over again. Can we code a fixed frame screen? And I am. I'm going to code a fixed frame screen with an eight. And we're going to do that demonstration live. If we can do it live, hopefully we can. But I don't want to do it pre-recorded. But I think I can do it right here in the living room. I put some plastic around right here because it's only 92 inches. It's not a big screen. So we're going to order an aluminum fixed frame screen. I think I'll get a silver ticket. I think they're called silver tickets, right? I'm going to order a silver ticket. Usually all silver tickets are light gray. We're going to do the before and after, after we change the screen. We'll do a silver ticket screen, aluminum fixed frame silver ticket, ticket screen. Probably at around 92 inches. That's what I'm going to do. And we'll bird it. There we go. Just want to make sure you see everything. There's plenty of light in the environment. All right, you can see how much light we have in our environment. As you can see, windows are fully open. The only window I don't have open, which is that one, which is not going to make any difference because light is hitting here. It's not going to turn around and curve and hit the screen. It's physically impossible. But this light right here, just to show you, there is sunlight piercing my screen. I mean, piercing, not piercing my screen, but piercing the environment. So there's sunlight actually entering the environment. You just can't, like I said, with this, with these, with these ray screens, you just don't have the ability to pull that contrast level. It's just not there at all. And yet contrast is everything. I was playing over and over again. It's everything. It's the reason why I can sit here and watch. I can sit here and set up. I had a black screen up here. I sat, when I had the black screen, oh my goodness, I had the black screen up here. I was watching movies in the daytime, in the evening, the whole nine yards, TV shows. I say, well, projection screens are meant to be used in the dark. Yeah, in the past, this is a new era. I mean, people now... They're replacing them for TVs. This is why ultra short throws are all the while. People want something they can sit right up against the wall and have a TV-like effect. But when they went on a big, they went on a big platform. That's what they want. You know, that's why these ultra short throw projectors sell so fast because everybody wants that TV-like experience from a projector. But the thing about it is, they don't want to be subjected to a dark environment because, of course, if you're watching movies and stuff, you're gonna be in the dark. But TV shows, things you're gonna do every day, you're gonna go watch movies every day. But your TV shows, sports, news, kids' cartoons, whatever you're watching, your crackle, um, YouTube, whatever you're gonna be doing on here, you know, you're not gonna you don't be sitting in the dark 24/7 because of that. Hey, this is not a controlled environment in any way whatsoever. We have no control over all this that's going on. That's why when I first saw this house and I saw the windows, I was like, goody, goody, good shoe. Oh heck yeah, I was happy. How much ambient light pushes into this environment? I think that's the only thing that excites me about a house is the wall, how big a screen I can put on my wall, and basically how much ambient light we can pour into an environment. So any house that I look for has to have a ton of ambient light pushing through. If you notice, when you watch my videos, you know that every house I picked out had a lot of light in it. I think I'm the very few people get happy in the morning over sunlight. Like, oh my God, it's a sunny day. This is going to be an amazing day. today yeah ship out the day which means if you placed an order for those one gallon kits we are shipping out your product today your um, um the number that we gave you should activate between the day and tomorrow i have more containers coming in because that's what it, we're just we're going through containers like crazy so we have to basically keep restocking we restocking restocking container to container container i'll show you let's walk away from this for a minute look at this i just want to show you that up close look at that it's beautiful all right so walk with me people I'm going to our room right here going to the kitchen keep in mind i'm not supposed to be up here doing this because i'm, I'm working on something really big in the downstairs and this is the only time i get permission to be up here in this area my tea 
right there in the morning. So these are the big boy containers right there going out today. The boxes over there are stacked up. We got to do some more boxes today. So I'm waiting for just the rest of the containers to get here. We ordered about 60 containers. So they should be here shortly. Once they get here, we can slap those labels on them, put the seal on them, wrap them up. Run them. And I got a bunch of bubble wrap around here somewhere, which I got to track down and get them out the door. So all those are prepaid over there. We take all this, drop them off. We'll activate. This is the surface that will come with your screen. Keep in mind, if you don't have a big enough screen to paint it on, we will supply you with one. Six by nine canvas. Now we have canvas and we have it in black, two different kinds. I think we're just gonna switch over to canvas. I like the canvas much better. Now this is a different kind of canvas. This is an artist canvas. So artist canvas are a little bit different because it's a very smooth material. It can't be any nits, any imperfections. It has to be very smooth canvas. Because keep in mind, an artist is putting his best work on this. He doesn't want something where it's gonna make his artwork look raggedy with a bunch of strings hanging off of it. And it's seamless, which means seams are only on the edge, not in the middle of the screen. I advise you do not go to Home Depot or Lowe's and try to buy canvas from them because that is a painter's canvas. And that painter's canvas is going to have riddles with all forms of loose strings and holes and everything else and little naps all over the screen. It's going to destroy your screen. You don't want that. So we're going back to our star fill demonstration right there. As a matter of fact, let's hit this one right here. Over here, we got a lot of light pushing through this environment. So I ordered more LED lights for the gaming room. Yeah, more LED lights are coming in. And cause I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna try out that room. And then I a chance to show you the final, final, like I said, I wanted to show you last night and I was planning to, but the camera died. My phone died, so really couldn't do too much on that one. Look at the background of the beautiful jellyfish. And that's the background of a gray screen with beautiful jellyfish. Start it back to the beginning. I started back to the beginning. I'm gonna go down and grab and get my sugar, my tea. Did I start that? Here we go. We did start it. There you go. right there on top of the projector. Okay, that's a short trip to insanity. It's right here the entire time. I had somebody come into my room and tell me one time, somebody told him that calibrating your projector will heighten your black levels. No, it will not. Now, for those of you that are thinking, I have one person asked me yesterday, that ingredients that I showed you how you're going to make light gray screen paint, knock yourself out. But the person was asking me, what if I put a lot of black into it? Will I achieve the same thing? No, you won't. You'll end up with basically a screen that produces a very dirty white level. There's a trick to making a black screen produce white. There's a little trick to it. I couldn't tell you. That's our trade secret. Oh, by the way, we did apply for a trade secret. So it's a very expensive uh, piece of protection to have on your merchandise, but it's worth it. And that trade secret basically is the actual ingredients. It's, a, it's actual, when we build these screens, these, these formulas, there are four different ingredients. It isn't like splash and paint together back and forth. Now it's a little more complicated than that. It is, just to give you an idea, how insane some of this stuff is we have to, when we put it together is that imagine if you have like let's just put it in scenario if you have 
uh, four different entities and each entity has four different ingredients. Out of those four different ingredients, each one has to be broken down in a certain way. I told you heat has a way of basically changing a chemical's uh, uh, infrastructure and does this cold. All right. Same thing. If you look at water, if you freeze, it becomes ice. And if you melt, it becomes water. Like sugar, you take sugar and you heat it up, it becomes a kind of a caramely kind of syrup, kind of a kind of a texture, and that's what I'm saying. So there's interesting ways on how a, a, a chemical structure would change depending on how what kind of elements will actually hit it. So with the formulas we develop, it isn't just like splash and paint together. No, there are certain elements. There's four elements, and within those four elements, you have maybe four or five different ingredients, and they have to be broken down and mixed a certain way. So everything blends like a perfect. I'm going to say a play, all right? All the actors are on, all the actors play their parts perfectly, and you see the best show you've ever seen in your entire life. That's the best way I can possibly put it. So it's a little bit harder, but there's a sequence that we developed and designed separately from the paint itself that allows the screen to be able to heighten and pull a white level. That's the trademark secret that is in the process of being actually locked in. Because like I said, now that we're dealing with companies, a company would have the power to be able to go in and spend the money to have people come in and try to reverse engineer the technology. That's where everything's being locked up. Average customer is not going to spend $100,000, $150,000, or maybe $200,000 to try to reverse engineer some technology. And in the long run, don't have the lawyers and the power to keep from getting hit with a lawsuit. And the company, on the other hand, can do that easily because they have the money and the capital to do so. So that's why 8, 9, and 10s, their trade secret, or more than a trade secret for 9 and 10, they have a different interesting, they are being locked up. That's being locked in. When we're talking about whole nine yards, man, I mean, I spent a lot of money and I had to get to pay for the paperwork to get the copyrights, to get uh, the trade secrets done, to get the patent pendings, all this other crap I had to get done. It's a lot of stuff. Because I'm not dealing with the everyday customer now. I'm dealing with companies now. Let's go on here. Uh, let's see. We'll bring up. We're doing, uh, those who just popped in, we're doing uh, contrast levels on gray screens. So you have to lock it up, man. You have to. You're not dealing with the average Joe. You're not. You're dealing with somebody who's been in business probably longer than you have and probably knows more tricks than you could possibly think of. But like I said, in business, you have to be the trust. It's a lot of trust in business. People that we're doing business with, I do trust them. I do trust them. Now they know exactly what I'm dealing with. Dealing with. And uh, they don't show any of the signs of it. But still, like I saw, it's business. Everything still has to be protected. Even with them, those contracts, those contracts have to have certain things written in those contracts to protect both parties. So all that has to be in there. That's why when a contract is written, no contract that gets written from the door is automatically going to be, you know, ready to sign. Maybe this in chapter six, there's going to be flexibility. So that's why they just send you a draft and you bring it to your attorney and your attorney reads over and says, well, you might not want to do this. You might not want to do that. So you can work it out and, you know, both parties are just going to have to work it through until you come up with a final contract. So today, doo, 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 we got a final contract upstairs. Negotiations back and forth. There are a few things we didn't like, a few things that they were very actually they were very, very um first contract I had that they were very, very on board with a lot of stuff we asked for, which was freaking cool. You know what I mean? Because let usually we go back and forth a few times before it's actually signed, but we didn't have to go back and forth too much. So eventually, like I said, this is a company that bought our product, installed it into a church. And the church members love the screen. They love the screen. That's how we got the contract. They had hands-on experience with our technology. It was freaking cool. So he believes, this guy, the company we signed with, believes that black technology is the best way to go. Now, you're looking at this right now. You're probably thinking, that right there. Some people look at this and they'll think, well, the contrast looks pretty good. I can see the screen. It looks fantastic. No, no, no. This is bad. This is really, really bad. It's bad, people. Bad. I'm going to grab some newspaper and just smack some of y'all sometimes. I swear. I'm going to mess with you. That's how it's supposed to look.
missing all that contrast is gone you're missing it so this is like i said simple demonstration this is what we asked a particular individual to do this demonstration right here we were going to do it if we got our hands on that on the, on the, on the light gray screen paint we got our hands on it you would have saw the demonstration with his product right next to one of these screen paint mixes we would have made just to show contrast levels that's the reason why particular individual fought extremely hard for it not to show up here which we don't care now because it makes no difference like i said all you would have to do is just basically just recopy the same demonstration we did we left the ingredients when every every demonstration we do with this particular screen paint we leave the ingredients at the bottom now we do give you fair warning if you do paint your screen with this we're not responsible for you messing up your screen so if you paint this on your screen and you find that the color level's not popping, the contrast doesn't look right, and you got this sparkly Christmas tree effect racing across your screen, that's not our problem. That, you know, at your own risk, you want to make it, put it on your screen, knock yourself out. But like I said, if this individual won't give us the product, then better yet, best thing to do is to actually make our own different forms of screen paints. And if he feels that his is different from all the ones we have up here, he will have no problem doing the exact same demonstration, contrast only, no bright, beautiful colors, contrast only, and it will environment. And you compare my environment to anybody else's environment online. See that we have a little sunlight piercing through. Yeah, the light's on. That's how it's supposed to look. That's how bright your environment's supposed to be. That's why I don't understand how, like I said, when you got elite screens and them out there and they're doing demonstrations against white screens i mean how much competition can really get off a white screen it's like too easy too easy all right so judging by my neighbor's driveway their cars are gone i don't want to ask you like i told you i don't want to be walking back and forth for the camera because our windows meet face to face we got duplexes over here so not duplex detached i want to detach home so i don't want them seeing me walking back and forth with a camera recording and half these, well, they know what I do for a living, but you know, still, it's just an uncomfortable feeling. Because I know if I saw that, that would pretty much kind of freak me out too. So I just make sure I look in the drive where all their cars are gone, and then that way it doesn't spook them. So you can see right here, show you the environment, plenty of light. We're using a 4300 lumen projector. That's my cup of tea right there. 4300 lumens. Mind you, if you got anything less than this, you're not going to see it at all, period. At 4,300 lumens, doesn't make a difference how much light you have in your environment. Doesn't make a difference how much lumens you have in your projector. Not gonna pick it up. Let's go back. Like I said, if you go back, I mean, way, way, way back, go way back where black screens didn't exist, and the only screens you had were white screens and gray screens. That was it. Gray screens at that particular era was a more superior screen because it could produce a better contrast than a white screen. White levels would be a little bit off, but still, it had better contrast, had better color pop. That's why back then people were saying if you had a 4K, not 4K, if you had a 1080p projector, in order for you to see the proper colors, you'd have to have a gray screen to do it. Now you have black technology, it's more superior than a gray screen. I think the next one kind of plays Mortal Kombat again.
Now, see, I can see the, the bridge. Oh, this one should be close so you can see it for yourself. Let's take our stuff off. There you go. It's about as real as it real as it gets. Can't even get the night sky. And this is at 4,300 lumens. You know, if you don't believe me, this is my Sony. Look up the model number right there. That's a Sony VP. Let me see right there with the number on it. So you look at the model of that projector. It's a VPL FH30. That's a 4,300 lumen projector. That's sitting probably from the screen. I say maybe nine feet from the screen at 4,300 lumens. So I think next demonstration, I'm gonna shut my windows real quick. Next demonstration, we are going to do a, we're gonna do a, uh, we're gonna bring down the Optima GT56. We're gonna do that one next. We'll bring that up next, the Optima GT56. That'll be the next one. So we'll do it at ultra short throw. And then we'll do a demonstration outside and then we're just outside, we're going to take our screen, paint, and we're just going to coat right down the side of it like that. Outside. All right, let me go pack this up. I gotta get ready. I gotta get cleaned up because I have to be ready to drop packages off today for you guys. Uh, those of you that your tracking numbers haven't activated yet, don't worry about it. We have containers coming in today. We literally ran out of containers. So keep in mind, we're having that big uh, promotional deal on the website. That is a uh, special um, a special promotional deal. I just said that twice. All right, so that comes with a gallon of screen paint. Let's take a walk over here. Now we got sunlight hitting the projector and everything. So we'll pop over here into the next room. I'm just gonna recap here to go. Um, we have with that kit, for those of you that want to paint a much bigger screen, you want to have a bigger screen in your home, or basically if you just want to break it up and just have two screens, you put one in the backyard, one in the front yard, your know, screens are completely fully weatherproof, or you just put one in another room. So these are customers' one gallon kits that are going out today. Um, it does come with a six by nine blackout cloth. So if you can't figure out what you want to paint this on or, you know, keep in mind buying blackout cloth alone is going to cost you somewhere. If you can get it cheap, maybe 50, but depending on the size of it, you know, the bigger the blackout cloth, the more you're going to pay. Carl's may cost you maybe 60, 80. This is free. So it's a free blackout cloth surface that you get. So we have in two different forms. We have it in canvas and we have it in the black right here. All right, so we're gonna pack this up and you get this for free. Keep in mind, like I said, if you're gonna pay for this separately, blackout cloth is not cheap, especially at six by nine. It's gonna cost you either 50 or 60 bucks for this surface. And this is what you're getting for free from us, plus free worldwide shipping, which means no matter where you work at, and I'm sorry, where you live at, no matter where you live at, Hong Kong, France, Italy, doesn't make a difference. We can ship it to your front door for free. Also too, uh, if you do require a signature confirmed, because some people may have, you know, interesting characters in their neighborhood that may feel the need to pick up their packages and go with it, we can give you signature confirmed. You can request that through an email, which means those who don't know what signature confirm is, that means that the um, United States Postal Service um, cannot drop that package off without your signature. So 
you know, if you miss it, don't worry about it. All you have to do is take that pink little slip or basically your uh, tracking number. You can call the post office. Just go down there and pick it up from there. That's all you have to bring your ID and pick it up from there. But it's like convenient for some people may live in an area where people may want to walk away with your merchandise. And that way you don't have to worry about that. We give you that peace of mind. So that is free. If you want it, just send us an email. Say, hey, Ken, want signature confirm? Boom, it's done. All right. So let me get these ready, get these wrapped up, get them out the door so we can have some happy, happy customers and they can enjoy their screens. I am got to, I'm sorry, I am got to. Wow, that just tells you right there in the morning that I had to start drinking coffee because I don't know, I think tea does work sometimes, but not all the time, I got to. Sound like freaking Superman from the bizarre world. Bizarro Superman. All right, so that's it for us. Take down my projector right here. And I have to get some other things that have to be done. Oh, uh, real quick, let me show you what's going on in the gaming room real quick before we leave from here. Because yesterday, yeah, I had to shut down my projector. Not my projector, my uh, camera shut off on me. Um, I ran out of juice. Let me shut my blinds too for my neighbor's sake. This man is absolutely crazy. I tell you, he's crazy. Crazy. My neighbors. Why well, do I have to explain? It. Opening up your curtains like that. And why do you keep turning your lights on and off? I think I'm getting gang symbols or something. Or some kind of Morse code. I should tell them that. I should say, look, I'm practicing Morse code. That's why I have my lights are flashing on and off. I have to tell them something. Other than that, you know, they think I'm nuts. All right, so let me go upstairs. I think we're done here. We got everything we need. All right, okay, so where's my cell phone? I got it attached right here. Like I said, people, short trip to insanity. All right, so let's go pop upstairs. I know I had to clean my staircase and doing it today. We're all walking upstairs together. Dream catcher. This is why I can never get a good idea in my sleep. I'm over here just catching all my dreams. Woo! So we're in the room now. Now I have run my air conditioner. So some people say, Ken, it is freaking January. Why is your air conditioner on? Because I'm running two projectors in here, my friend, and it gets hot in this bad boy. But I got the room nice and cool, so I should be good. So this is what we're gonna, these are the plans for the lead lights. So I dropped one set down here along the baseboard, but I think I'm gonna need some more because I need for this area to be like, I want it to glow, just not too bright, but I want to give it like a kind of a soft glow. So I'm gonna have to run another set down here at the floor. Run it right here, just from here to here. This is all I need to go from here to here, from there. I, just, I, I didn't say what you thought I just said. <laughs> from right, so I'm gonna say floor. From here to here, so I get more of a back that effect that pushes off. And then over here, I have it coming from here because I didn't want to cut it, you know what I mean, and destroy it. So I got it running up to here to here. And then I have the cable right there that connects. So I ordered about, I don't know, 32, ordered like 60, 70 feet of this stuff. So it's coming in. So I'm, actually, it's coming in today. So then I have to run it from here along the back of this. I'm going to run it down there. I'm going to hit the baseboard. Now this screen right here, I'm gonna change out. I can figure out exactly what's going on. It's my computer. Huh. Oh well, I, I'll, I'll figure out how to switch that back on. Sometimes, there, there we go, it just popped on. There we go, computer just popped on. All right, so we're gonna run it back here to the back of the baseboard. All right, I'm gonna get my chair to move it away. So we're gonna hit down here, right here. Now since I'm gonna shrink this screen, but then again, I think I might not shrink it. I do like the size of it though. I might keep it. We're gonna run it up here. And then up there, and then up there, and then up there. And then we're going to bring it back down, all the way down to the floor. It's going to hit the back of the baseboard. And then we're going to bring it up the side of the bookcase. Underneath here. I don't want it outside here. I don't want too much light pushing out. So I'm going to keep it underneath so it can illuminate all the light going downward on my display case. And then we'll run it all the way through here. Connect it from here. Build a little bridge in there so it connects from there. All the way down there. Back around there. Down to the back of there. And then we'll connect it back in again. Whew, that's going to be fun, isn't it? Yes, sirree. Now for the ceiling, I have that right there. I put an ocean wave on my ceiling right there. And that projects up on the ceiling, my ocean wave. So I'll turn on my projector really quick. Now, the projector I'm using in the room is my 720p DLP projector. 
All right, there, that's my short throw, 720p DLP projector. That's the model number right there. And you see right there, and that's my short throw. So that's what I'm using it here. Right here, there we go. Right there. And I have this running to the PS4. Yeah, because I'm on YouTube and I left YouTube running like forever. Because I watch on YouTube, I'm gonna try again. My giant screen coated with black technology. Wow. And over here, that's my work PC right there. Well, actually, I have my work PC and all that's down there. Bottom. And then there's the Xbox One and PS2, clap trap, and that was easy button. Oh, I changed out the keyboard. So keyboard's gone. I got rid of the crusty keyboard. It is gone. Now, to turn your footage to my work environment, so I have to have plenty of light in the work environment. It cannot be dark in here. I have to have plenty of light in here. Just checking my stand here. It seems to be a little, I can swear the stand was a little taller than this. There we go. And this is on a 720p projector. My lamp life on this projector is 91%. So I already ordered the new lamp for it. Not bad. I got it for like forty-four dollars. Now, I doubt, I'm not going to get the measurements on this screen. I haven't had a chance to measure it out yet. It's much bigger than the screen I have downstairs. The screen I have downstairs is 126. This is way bigger than the 126. I don't know the size of it yet. Someone was asking, they thought it was 4.3. No, my projector is set to 1610. That's why it looks strange. I have a 1610 setting for my screen. Hold on, you've got to see this. This, I like to do this. I'll do, I'll do this demonstration. Hold on. I love how this video starts off because it just really submerses you in. I love this demonstration right here. If someone asks if you want your car upon this cheese, Nah, I doubt that, man. I hate McDonald's food. I really do. McDonald's food is freaking instant poison. I mean, it wasn't that first. When I was coming up, McDonald's was actually really good food, but now it has so much cornmeal in the burgers, it don't even taste real anymore. McDonald's could hate me for this, but the only way McDonald's works out is you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you need to move your bowels. That stuff will make you go to the bathroom. It will move your bowels.
We have no washing out, no discoloration, which you should have no discoloration around the screen. No tan, none of that. No screwdriver. Alright, so we got lights on. We'll take it off. Well, technically, we're not in the dark. We should have light pe piercing in. I think the only reason why I couldn't do school is the fact that it's been into the unknown. I mean, you gotta, people got to consider the fact the ocean is pretty much the, you know, inside outer space that we haven't really fully explored. And there's got to be things down there, man, that you just do not really want to bump into. I mean, that's the only thing that just freaks me out about the ocean altogether. It's just the unknown. There are things down there. Keep in mind, there is a life literally all over the planet. So what makes you think at around, I don't know, and part of the part of the deepest part of the ocean, there isn't things down there living that you just don't want to bump into. So, like I said, you have giant squids and all that stuff pop up from time to time. You, know, you really don't want to bump into something like that. But you know, there's a chance to bump. But you just happen to be having to be that one day you become that million to one because somebody has to be. Somebody literally has to be that million to one. All right. So that's what freaks me out about the ocean. I, had a, I was having a conversation about somebody, and not to go on a dim subject here, but it's true. I don't do cruises. I would never do a cruise, man. The only way I would do a cruise is that someone made me a full official Iron Man suit, and I could just basically just leave the boat at will. But I do not do cruises, and here's the reason why I don't do cruises. Because when you consider the fact that, that even if you're on a plane, I shouldn't be talking about this, but I mean, it's, it's true. I mean, if I'm on a plane, and a plane is going to crash, and I fly, I fly quite a bit, so... If I'm on a plane and the plane's going down, I mean, usually my method for basically getting on the plane is I just don't sleep the next day. So by the time I get on the plane, I'm so tired, I just sleep through the whole thing, and I just don't realize I'm already there. But at least when, I'm sorry to be speaking about this, but it's true, man. You get it over and done with. It crashes, whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's over and done with, unless you land in the middle of the ocean somewhere. But a boat? No, 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 no. You're not getting me on a boat, man. I mean, come on. I mean, I think it's a cruel way to go because the bottom line, I mean, state bottom line like the Titanic snapped in half. I mean, you got to deal with the freaking destruction that's going on in the boat. You survive that nonsense and just happen to make it to a, basically one of those, what they call life rafts or one of the things on the side of the boat. Life, I think it's life raft or whatever it is. You make it to one of them and now you're just sitting there bobbing in all this freaking water waiting for a freaking chopper or something to fly over and pick you up. I mean, I'm pretty sure since in this decade in time with all these freaking satellites and everything we got, pretty much trying to track somebody down that's lost at sea, should not be a problem, you know what I mean? Because pretty much we got the world covered with satellites. But still, the fact that you're out there in all that water and you can't drink it. That's what a lot of people don't realize that part. You'd be dying of thirst and you can't drink any of that water that you're sitting around. That's like somebody locking you inside of a glass box and sticking you into a, in a supermarket and you can watch all that food, but you can't eat it, but you can starve to death. Oh, heck no. That's the reason I want to get on a boat. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'll take my chances on an airplane any day or, or a train any day. But yeah, that's it. That's my whole theory. My wife wants to do a cruise so bad. And she's like, come on, we can do this cruise. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Now, keep in mind, if they develop boats or, or, or ships with the ability to take flight, I'll get on one. Because when this boat can capsize like the Poseidon, then I'll get on that boat because we know we can all take flight. Now, that'd be a good idea. See, so I'm going to bring that one up. Let's turn a boat into part boat, part helicopter. And then I'll get on one. I'll definitely get on one. You gotta watch. I want anyone's taking a cruise. I wouldn't advise you to watch these videos, but I watch videos of giant cruise ships getting caught in massive storms out in the middle of nowhere, and those things get thrown around like freaking rubber duckies in a freaking pool with a bunch of kids. 
it is not a pretty ordeal because you got to consider the fact while this massive boat is pushing back and forth, there are tons of furniture and heavy objects that are sliding along with the boat. No, nope, I'm good. Anyway, I wouldn't even do a private jet. No. Nope. I'll tell you why I wouldn't do a private jet. Private jet, pretty much, you're kind of at the mercy of, 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 the, of the pilot. Pollock can pretty much do whatever he wants to do because, you know, chances are, you know, he's not under any rules and regulations, much like a pilot at an airport has to be under strict regulations on how they fly that plane. Yeah, I'm good. Why can't we just have freaking, what's that thing called, uh, oh man, the thing on Star Trek, it was called the, um, well, I forgot the name of it, the, the transporter that they had on Star Trek, the one that can transport you anywhere you want. But you know how that thing works? It actually breaks down your molecules. All of it breaks down your molecules, and it actually takes them apart and puts them back together. That's how the, the transporter, I think that's what a transporter does. Breaks down your molecules, all of them, and transports them to another direction, and it puts you back together. Oh, there's going to be accidents. <laughs> there's going to be accidents. Wake up, you got your head, head sticking out of your head. I seen a comedian joking about that. Um, what was his name? Dane, uh, no, it was something Cook. I can't think of Dane Cook or his name was. But he joked about that. I love this. I think I'm Borderlands. I'm, gonna, I'm downloading some games today. I haven't got Dragon Ball Z yet, which I don't know why. And I play enough of the demos on it, so I'll buy that today. I gotta get some shooters. I don't have any shooters. Not one shooter up in this place. That's what I'm talking about. Black screens have some of the brightest white levels. Look at this. Now it might not be as bright as a white screen and it might not be as bright as a gray screen but like I said, the white levels are so high you don't miss it. Skin tone, beautiful. Lights out. She sure looking back and forth, lights on, lights off. Break my neck doing that. <laughs> I'd be the one to miss and like land the freaking and hit the backboard. How did you do that one? I don't know. That is freaking cool. That is freaking cool. Pull up that GoPro. GoPro has a really it shows all the different whites, blues, everything in there. Let's go dig that one up.
I think it's a good thing I did the screen because it was like me about painting on the wall and I think we already did the Optima painted on the wall. So um, I think I just had to do a much bigger screen. I love the screen. Oh my goodness, man. Gaming on the screen is freaking amazing. I love the game on the screen. Mine. This is on a 720p projector that I bought on eBay for $139. No 4K, no 1080p. On, we did lights on, we did lights off for you. Because everybody wants to see both. They want to see lights on, they want to see lights off. Now I'll put the model number of my projector for free to look it up. Those are close.
lights on, lights off. Just do a little back and forth. Same? Where's the other one I want it? Nope. All right, we'll take this one right here. No, no, we do it back. I want to do the other one. That's when I want it, but we'll go back. All right, whatever.
720p, no 4K. That just tells you right now, if you have our technology, you can go to eBay and get a 720p projector for $139. You don't pay much at 720p, and you're going to get that reaction from our technology. And your image is not even going to fade. The lights are on. And people are racking their brains right now trying to get an expensive projector because they feel that that's going to make a big improvement on the screen. Yeah, if you got the right screen, it'll make a big improvement. If you don't, then pretty much you just spent money on nothing. package just hit my door or I might be up a little too loud. Be good right there. All right, let's go back. It might be a little too loud. This will show you contrast and white at the same time. Let's put you over here, back over there. And this is one of the very few demonstrations that will show you white levels and uh, black levels at the same time. Alright, let's try something else different. I do so many of these, it's not even funny. I saw something like right here. Wait, let me put this as a channel. This is it. Now, I love this part when somebody tells you that you have to have a 4K projector for detail. As I said before, black screens pull up contrast. And any contrast screen is going to pull up significant detail. Gray screens can't do that. See the detail in the scale? In the scale? This, is a, this is a projector that is not uh, 1920 by uh, 1080p. It's not 1920 by 1200. It is 1280 by 800. That's it. This is why when we get a chance to go over to the, uh, when we get a chance next year, hoping next year we get a chance to go to those, um, those um, events where people are showing off their different projection screens. Our booth plans will be designed a little bit differently. We will have 10 times more light than the average booth, and we'll be using all 720p projectors for our demonstrations. Just to show those jokers over there that while you guys are sitting here with 4K projectors at around four and 5,000 lumens, 
We're doing this with projectors way below yours and still produce an amazing screen. And maybe toward the end, we'll bring on a high power projector and just show them exactly how the screens react on a high end projector. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Yeah, early in the morning. I try to get these out of the way because like I said, today is a chip out date. So we're trying to get as much done as we possibly can. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Anytime you wake up in the morning, you're having a good day. Well, yeah, matter of fact, the fact that you wake up makes it a good day. I tell my friends, I'm having a really bad day. Yeah, but you woke up, didn't you? It's not a bad day. I can't wait for you to get it either. That paint, this paint's amazing. I just did this live. I painted this screen live on my wall. I haven't measured it out yet. Um, I just came in here and bought my 720p short throw projector and I basically just pulled back the projector as big as I could get it on the screen and just traced it out with the photo tape and painted it in but I haven't had a chance to measure it yet. It's, 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 it's bigger than the screen I had downstairs in the theater room because the screen downstairs in the theater room is 126 inches but it's way bigger than that. So I'll, I'm going to measure it out today and then that way I can get a size of it. But it's actually not set to 16.9, it's actually set to 16.10. So we're doing sunsets with lights on and lights off. Mm. And everybody's been talking about those Popeye chicken sandwiches. You ever try this one? I know I, I experiment a little bit when I go deep from sometimes, but I have no regrets in doing it. I got I love Chick Fil A. Oh man, I love freaking Chick Fil A. Yeah, Chick Fil A makes amazing freaking nuggets. Anyway, I was, I was not even eat Chick Fil A nuggets. The nuggets that's all I eat. But anyway, I got the idea of getting the Popeye sandwich and getting the Chick-fil-A nuggets and actually putting it all together on one sandwich with the secret sauce. Good gracious, man, I'm telling you. Out of body, I was not there, I was not on earth, I was someplace else, but I was feeling fantastic. down isn't much to tell you the truth because I still have window light that cascades in oh yeah definitely I had a 4k projector I had a 4k projector I'm actually planning this summer to buy five of them there's five 4k projectors that I have my eyes on uh, I'm planning to buy uh, one's actually 7,000 one's 10,000 lumens and the rest of them is actually an ultra short though I want my um Matter of fact, no, 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 take that back. There's a Sony Ultra Short, though, that I want to get my hands on. I'm planning to get all the Sony. So I want a Sony Ultra Short, though, which I have downstairs, but I want to get the one in 4K. They're only 4K. I'm getting the 4K, um, I guess, the, uh, for, for long distance, or for distance row, I'm getting another 4K Sony. And then uh, for, um, I need an Ultra Short, though, Short, though, and a Long Throw, all in Sony. So that's what I'm going to get. And then there's an Optima projector that I'm looking at. That, that's the one at 7,000 lumens. That one there is a uh, short throw uh, laser projector, 4K laser. That's the one I'm getting right there. And then it's a 10,000, and that's the Ronco. I never had a Ronco before, so I figured I'm going to buy a Ronco. That's a movie projector. That's a really big I'm my CRT. My CRT. Well, the guy King Black, he does a lot of demonstrations for us. He has the wallpaper projection screen. Um, 
He has the uh, PX747, which is the 4K projector I used to have. Let me see how long this goes on to. I saw some animals on here. I want to go straight to the animals. Wildlife is putting me to sleep. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. We can go with this right here. I'll take this. Some bright colors. It's black. And if you look at the screen here, and if you watch me walk in front of the projector with the lights on, these are black screens. The reason why, because we have a lot of light in the environment. But that, my friend, is a black screen. It's not gray. Here's the thing you have to consider the fact. If it's a gray screen, and we do a dark, dark, dark spray paint, um, screen paint mix. We design one over here. Under a star field, it would have to come up either gray or black. And dark gray screens don't come up black. They come up a kind of a dark shade of gray. Anybody, everybody, actually anyone who owns my technology knows who owns it, it screens black. It's just that a certain individual has to say it's gray because he doesn't quite understand how is a black screen producing a high white level. He can't get around that. And since he can't get around that, the only conclusion that he could possibly think of is the screen would have to be an extremely dark gray. If you look at the Supreme 8, they're a different shade of black. So if we take that screen and we lay it against another black screen, it does come up black. It just comes up a different shade of black. People have got to understand that if you go to a paint store and you say, hey, can I get some black paint? They're going to ask you what shade of black you want. Shade black comes in multiple shades. Now, back when screens used to be dark gray, they considered a dark gray screen before black screens to come out to be considered to be a black. Gun metals were considered to be a black screen, but gun metals kind of a bluish black screen. Well, if you look at a technology, I've done enough paint on demonstrations in my videos to show that the screen is black. If you look at any of our screens, any of our demonstrations are black. Like I said, we had an incident with Mr. So-and-so-and-so -and -so by basically taking our product and mixing it with black paint. If you mix our product with black paint, if you do anything with white levels, it comes up dark. So how is it possible that I can do a demonstration on a gray screen that is slightly higher than white levels on our screen and we can produce the same amount of color when looking doing a fish tank demonstration, which I did yesterday live. How is that possible? If our screen came out so dark. And keep in mind, this is coming from the same individual who has protested that black screens, keep in mind, I'm say it again, black screens were not good screens to do business with due to the fact they produced dark and dirty images. He never said gray in any of his demonstrations. He said black. So he knows the technology is black. We know the technology is black. You don't protest over and over again against black screens and then turn around and say it's gray. That doesn't make any sense. That kind of makes you a bit of a hypocrite or whatever you would call it, but that's what it is. So it's a, it's a black screen. No matter how many pe people want to actually taint the color, or whatever you have to do with it, or how they're going to change it, the screen's black. You see me do demonstrations, it's black. My 200 inch screen sitting on my expression one is black. So it's a different shade of black. But there's no such thing you can go into a paint store and say, hey, can I get black paint? They're gonna ask you, what shade do you want? You know how different shades of black there are? Quite a lot. There's quite a lot of different shades. The reason why it was coated in a different, different shade, an interesting shade of black, that protects our company. So if someone sits there, and we learned this when we did the 7, the biggest mistake when we designed the 7, 7s were jet black. So anyone could come on and do a demonstration, we never thought anybody would sink that low, to do a demonstration and mix the container with black paint, showing that the image came up dark and dirty. So then when we started doing our demonstrations versus black paint versus all these different black screens, as you can see in the demonstration, our screen was pulling up a higher white level but also, too, it was matching the other black screens. That's why when I did the wallpaper screen, we had some of the bars on the side that were black that were showing the physical screen that was not being hit by the projector. My friend, I trust me, I know my company, I know my work, and I know what I do for a living. I've been doing this for over 12 years. 
So I know exactly. If I'm the one who designed it, make it, made the made the uh, the, um, the the structure of this product, I would know what I would have over here. And keep in mind, our contract we just signed, they know it's black. If they knew it was gray, they would have brought it to our attention that we were advertising a black screen when actually it was gray. I think they would have never issued us a contract to begin with. So yes, trust me, I know. I couldn't care less what anybody else says. The bottom line is the demonstrations that we saw were completely unfair because how is it possible that my, my image is supposed to be so dark, but yet you're seeing this live? So how is that possible? There you go. Ugh. Bam, real flash. Do, 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 do. Contract. Which I can't show you what it is yet. There you go. Once we sign our hand, once we sign right there, it becomes official. That means we have a global corporate, we have a global contract. All I got to do is sign my name there. It's official. That's it. And I'm going to show you something in the contract. I'm not going to show you what we're getting paid because you don't need to see that. That's for only my wife to see. But I want to show you 9 and 10. I told you that the 9 and 10 were going to end up under a contract before we launch it. I told you it was going to happen. That technology is insane. Now, I can say this. Nines, on the other hand, and tens are different. Eights are black, but they're a different shade of black. But the nine and ten are different. Have you seen them? They come up looking, actually nines come up looking like they're gold. But they, they actually, when you look at it from the side, they're black. So that's the screen. I can't say what color it is yet until we actually finalize it because that screen is only at 10% and it's under now in a contract. So that's our contract right there. Once we sign that contract, that's it. And I'm going out to celebrate. Oh, yes, I am. I am going out to celebrate. I think I might go to Dave and Buster's. Maybe I'm going to take my girl to Dave and Buster's. And we're going to celebrate the signing of the contract. Now, as I told you before, um, once this becomes, this is already, once we sign it, it becomes official. I got to take it down to my notary and get it notarized and all the other good stuff. But once it's signed, that's it. So that means that what may happen and what may not happen, as I explained to you before, that uh, there's a good chance that the website could receive a password for distributors only. Because like I said, there's going to be a conflict in price, which means if they're charging, and keep in mind, like I said, this is a technology that has the ability to be able to produce a white level and black level at the same time, and also have the ability to produce amazing, beautiful colors. So keep in mind, you're going to be using this technology to recoat other screens. Let's say you got like a school district and they've got maybe about 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 screens. They have white screens. Instead of them going out and buying all the screens all over again, they just recode them with the technology. That's all they're doing. So with, doing, with that being said, that maybe if they're, whatever they're charging them, which I don't know, and I'm not going to disclose that information at all, period, what's going on in their end. But I do know that whatever they're charging, they don't want for someone to actually see one of our labels and say, hmm, I'll just track down the company instead of paying these guys. And if they track down the company, which they're not going to be hard to find because there's YouTube videos of us everywhere, they're going to be able to go in and go to our website and buy the, buy the paint from us. We won't know who they are when they go buy the paint. So we don't know if that's a contract distributor or if that's a customer or that's somebody basically going over one of our contract distributors head to buy. So in order to make sure that the only people that can buy from that website would have to have an official contract from us, we would have to basically lock the website and convert it into a distributorship website, which means the only way you can have access to it, you would have to have a passcode. 
and that would only be for the distributors. Now, how would you get the product? You would have to go to the distributor to get it. No, it's a fire distributor. I just doesn't mix up, but you know what I'm talking about. You would have to go through them in order to get it. So actually, I don't know if they're going to set up a page where you guys can come and buy. I don't know how that's going to all work out. I do know on my end that I'm probably going to be getting somewhere orders between maybe between 50, 60, maybe 70, maybe 80, maybe somewhere and hopefully somewhere maybe in the range of maybe 2,000, 4,000, 5,000 gallons a day. Now, for you to think, like, how am I going to process all that paint? Well, I got things set up aside. I got warehouse space, commercial property, uh, forklift operators, everything I would possibly need at my disposal to be able to get this job done. Even I even looked into several large pieces of machinery that actually are designed to process paint, as in drop these paint in labels, put them in containers, seal them, drop the labels on them, and push them out onto a pallet where they'll be wrapped up, sealed, and shipped out. And they're only going to one hub, so that makes it easier for me. Because all we have to do is tran transport it to the main base that's under our contract, and they disperse it everywhere they need it to go. So that's how everything is being set up on our end. So, like I'm talking about, when I came up in 2000, New Year's Eve, we launched the, we said that there was a 9 10 coming. But we weren't planning to have it contracted that fast. We knew it was going to have a contract on the Nevo, especially if this stuff does. So that's why I said, you know, why we have this stuff on the website right now, I would take advantage of it because sooner or later you're going to come to that website and it's going to ask for a password. Now, keep in mind, whole, we're going to make sure that all orders, every last order has been completed. Say we get an order for 100,000 gallons. Oh, God, I really don't want to think about that one right there. I mean, I have the machinery to run it, and I'll have to hire people and have to get a workforce and all that stuff. But um, hopefully start off slow baby steps. I mean, I can do 50 gallons, 60 gallons a day. That's easy, but, you know, that's crazy. And that's like, I can't tell you what I'm being paid. I'm, I forgot to tell you, I can't tell you that. So anyway, um, but um, all I do know is the fact that... Um, I'm thinking about it right now. There's all kinds of stuff racing through my head right now. So you have to excuse me. My brain shuts down for a little bit. There's lots of going through my head. So that's why we're having these promotional deals to give the customer a better chance of getting the product before the other company takes hold. Because keep in mind, we will no longer have uh, rights over charging for what we charge for the product. That will not be there anymore. They'll be up to the distributors to take care of that. And there's already, um, there's already orders already set aside before the contract was, si was signed. There were orders already set aside for companies who got a chance to look at those screens that were done in that church. So there are people already set up already to start placing orders for the technology. Especially 9 and 10. So, like I said, that's why we're having these promotional deals. Like I said, I would jump on it and order like i said because sooner or later one of these days and like i said it's not it's out of my control and then i can't scream at me about the saying hey look i thought you said well you know what i mean it's a contract i mean we're to do all in our contract all we're supposed to do is manufacture research and development which means we develop new stuff we do our research and we manufacture whatever the orders come through so there you go so um i'm going to sign my contract today and take it down to my notary and we're going to sign it. Depends on how fast an order goes through by this company. If it, well, we have orders coming through every week, at even at 50 gallons, that's just more than enough for me to be able to actually live a very good life at 50 gallons. I'm not going to, I guess I can't disclose what they're paying me for this, but it's more than enough to be able to. And keep in mind, I still have my capital that's punching in probably in about a year from now. I still have, I have a major lawsuit against a company that's punching in about a year from now, which it's never going to go to court due to the fact there's so much evidence and how I got hurt in this particular incident, which I'm not going to say too much about, that it's never going to go to court. It's pretty much when we sell out of court, hands down. So I got that coming too. So, you know, I don't really need the contract if I don't want it, but I do want a contract because this will allow me to put my screens in areas that, that would take me years to get into. So just want to leave it as... Um, Right now, it's on the website for the price that it is. And, uh, boy, this is going to get a huge change for us. And keep in mind, I'm not running this company. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm 51 years old, man. I'm retired. I'm not saying retired, but I'm going to have somebody else run. I'm getting a workforce 
they can run the company. I just have to be an overseer. So basically, I have to go in and just check on things from time to time. I'm planning to go travel and see the world. That's what I'm planning to go do. I went to Paris when I went to restaurant school and I studied as a chef over there. I'm planning to go back to Paris. You know what I mean? I haven't been back. I said one day I would go back and I am going to go back. Me and my, me and my, this one I'm going with my girl, which I'm, I can't say girl because she should be my wife. I'm going to plan. We're getting married pretty soon, so I got to get all that set up too. You know, the best thing about it is she wants to do the whole entire wedding. She, I have no part in the wedding at all. Of course, the, pay, the paying part, <laughs> I have a part in that, but no part at all, which is actually a good thing because I don't want to, I'm saying I want any part of it all, but yeah, man. I've seen Gods of the Wives. I don't want to be caught in that nonsense. But anyway, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a lot. It's going to be a lot. But I have to do mainly all the research. And I have two other business partners who are very close friends of mine. I will be bringing them on board because they're going to be helping me out with a lot of the stuff that I'm going to need that has to be done. Actually, one of them is a master programmer. He's a master programmer. He actually didn't like Windows XP and he rewrote the software for it. He's a pretty cool dude. Re he's, he's a master in coding. I said, that's his field. He's a master of coding. Encryption, coding, that's his field. And he's the one that's going to design the operating system for our, our shipping. Uh, I, can't, I can't talk about that yet. No, that's something different. I can't talk about that yet. Oh man, this is going to be very interesting. Before I leave out of here, sorry about the yawning and all. Before I leave out of here, I'm going to grab me a bowl of cereal too now. So I got lucky charms, people, lucky charms. Oh, ah. Right, before I leave out of here, I'm going to, like I said, all orders are going to be taken care of. Don't worry. It's got, I don't know, like I said, I really can't tell when the first orders will come through. But like I said, usually sometimes these things take some time to establish. So it could be a month, it could be two months, or it could be today. I don't know. But I do know that before we actually go down the road, we'll make sure all orders are all taken care of and everything is shipped out. So I think I'm going to request at least about two months, or probably a month on our behalf uh, to get things ready. But it depends on their side. I like it ready. But I will keep you up to date. Now probably people think I'm not gonna be doing any more videos. Oh heck yeah, I'm gonna be doing videos. I love doing streams, man. I love doing streams. We're still gonna be working on projects. We're still gonna be doing uh demonstrations and stuff like that. So that's where I'm doing too, some demonstrations on how to build different forms of screens and stuff like that when we're doing it also too. Oh, I can't do that one. I don't like that one because it shows a woman basically with a crown of thorns on her head and I don't approve of that. Well, for the fellow who said the demonstration he showed, the screen was gray. Keep in mind, this is this is coming from a fellow who did a demonstration against our product. And any demonstration we did on our product, our screens are always black. Any customer who shows off our screen is black. Uh, when Mr. Crow was making a statement how, how our screen paint came out black and dark, he said our screen paint was black, not gray. So like I said, people are going to try to debunk the theory that our technology is black. It doesn't make a difference. Like I said, we're contracted now. So, man. That's the whole bottom line. I couldn't care less about the crows or partays or any of them jokers. We're contracted. That's it. Enough said. Now, if our technology wasn't what it's supposed to be, I wouldn't be sitting here about to sign this contract if it wasn't. If my technology didn't work, I wouldn't be sitting here with this contract. It's not bragging. It's just true fact. I worked hard at my company for 12 years every single day doing what had to be done doing demonstrations that nobody else was doing and here i am final results of my life i walk off with a multi i'm not going to say what it is but it's a big contract it's global with technology that most people couldn't even figure out or even to begin to understand how it even functions and works so i couldn't care less about them 
I do know in July we will be getting something wrapped up real quick. That's going to be taken care of. We're not forgetting about that. That's going to be done. Now, regardless, like I said, you don't have one entity to deal with. Now you have two. But we couldn't care. I couldn't care less right now. I'm not saying I don't care about my customers. I love my customers. I'm good friends with a lot of my customers. A lot of people don't realize that. A few of my customers are on my Facebook page. Some of them I actually hang out with. A few of them I actually hang out with. They're actually in my, in my area that I hang out with. I'm cool with. I talk to my customers just like their family members. That's how I talk to them. Anyone's ever had a conversation with me can tell you hands down. That's how I talk to them. I talk to their family. Sit there and we talk about this. One time where I actually bumped into a guy who was actually into encryption with gaming. Oh man, we had a ball. We talked about everything from video cards to the old PCs and computers back in the day. Even DOS. Old, old um, operating system from back in the day. Really cool dude. But the naysayers, the haters, I don't care. Y'all can watch me grow for all I care. And you will. I'm pretty sure he mixed that paint with gray paint. I'm pretty sure he did. That's why I said I'm pretty sure that him and Mr. Crow knew each other. But I'm not worrying about that. That's for legal. That's going to be taken care of. I'm going to be a wreck and trust me. When I get done with building this company to the level I want to get with that corporate license, I'm going to be a company that you don't want to cross on that level. Now also too with that, I do plan to do charity work. A lot of charity work. And that's the one thing, a lot of things big companies don't do, you got to get back, you have to. You can't be greedy. One thing you can't be greedy is the one thing you shouldn't be. I mean, nothing pretty much is going to change about I me. Mean, I still shop at my stores and stuff like that. Nothing's going to change. So everyday joke. But the only problem, like I said, I don't have control over certain parts when it comes to the pricing of the technology because that's pretty much their hand on pricing. Mine is just research and development. That's all I do. But still, like I said, you have to get back. You should get back more than you should. You're not taking it with you anyway. Huh. Now, I have to redo. The 9 is going to be redone today because I said the 9 has to be finished. 9 is at 60% now. So I have a new coating downstairs for the 9 at 60%. It will be applied to my screen today. I'm ordering my movie curtain so I can finish off that project right there and get that out of the way and get that done. Uh, so I got to get cracking on that one. So that's going to be done also. Let me put you over here. You can get a shot. Wow, that has, takes a lot of freaking control. No, 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 that's too, uh... <laughs> I haven't seen any of these yet. Oh, this was funny, the undercover boss, <laughs> the Star Wars.
Oh, I gotta watch that. When did they do that one? Oh, yes, I gotta watch that one. This must be the new ones. Yes, okay, I have to check on this side. I gotta be watching this one tonight, definitely. Um, let's do a... Uh, hold on. We have to do the... I have to do the Hulkbuster on here. I have to do it on the big screen. I have to do the Hulkbuster on here. I have to do this one right here. Try sounds. I think this is one of my best scenes in the movie. Oh, my packages. Can you imagine if you just bought a brand new car and you had it parked out there when this was going on? I thought that was hot. trouble with that one yeah man freaking hot bus it was freaking amazing okay let's do uh let's do a uh, tree fire All right, I'm getting out of here. I gotta get going. I love just love this screen. Screen is freaking huge. Oh, I gotta play one game. Eh, can we play one game? We got time to play one game. We're gonna play something short, something sweet. Um. Ugh. Oh, all right. I'll do some driving. I'll definitely do a driving game. That's short and sweet. <sighs> I'm going back to Disney World. Oh yeah. I'm definitely going back to Disney World. Hopefully, before they're ready to basically start making orders, we can do more promotional deals. Because I want to do more promotional deals. I do. I really do. There's a lot more promotional deals I want to do before we before we, this thing becomes official. Well, it's already official once I sign. But you know, once I uh, once we uh, we start getting the orders in from them, so I want to start making this official. Uh, not official. I'm talking about. I want to start putting in more uh, promotional deals. I literally like doing the promotions. So we did two quarts, we did two quarts with, actually we did, yeah, we did two quarts at 179, and now we had the gallons going for 189 with a free six by nine blackout cloth surface. So 
they've been selling like crazy. The people are getting them as fast as they possibly can, which is actually fantastic. And thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. I do appreciate the support. I do. Well, that one's locked. We didn't unlock that one. All right, we gotta get cracking on that one. I am going to take this one. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna take the blazing streak. Definitely not doing the road. That's a nightmare. Ooh, yeah, I get the switch back and forth. Which one I'm taking? I am taking. I'm taking this one. Yeah, customize this one. Oh, come on, man. Oh, I missed that one? Mother freaking chicken. Get off me. Ah! Mother chair. Mother chair. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Woo. That's funny, thank you. Man, come on, man. It's like 40,000 gates on this one. Thank you. directly on top of me. Let me get a flip on this. Oh man, I wanted to get a flip on that. What's at 90%? There you go. Trailblazer! I keep missing that one coming down. I miss that over every time.
Oh, what the frick was that? Freaking, uh, where are my guns been moved? What the heck? Out of that one. Yes! I finally got a chance to curse somebody. I need some blood. I'll take that. Alright, am I out of here, people? Um, I gotta be up. I gotta take the packages out and get them out the door. I gotta get much done. And I gotta get this contract signed and get over to my lord to notarize it and all that other good stuff. Um, uh, we're still gonna be taking orders uh, for a while. Um, like I said, I gotta go to call them up and figure out exactly when first orders are gonna be pushing through. Um, but until then, we are still gonna have promotional deals on our website. So that's still gonna be going on as we speak. Um, once the shopping cart has depleted for the one gallon, um, we'll see what else what other promotional deals we'll come up with next, all right? Uh, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video demonstration. I have to go, and God bless.